when you opened up shop, you were at a different location at mm-hmm. the time. So kind of talk about that and then what led you to expanding to this this not this very large mm-hmm. place that you're in now. Well, growth, luckily, is mm-hmm. what you know what leads you to always to expand. But you start out you can start out two ways in the business like this. You can start out fresh, vanilla box, never been there before, open up, no customers, probably not knowing too much of what you're doing yourself. Mm-hmm. And Hopefully it takes off or you can buy an existing business with like customers that are already there. You're going to pay more money for that. There's going to be equipment there. It may work, may not. You never know until you get there and you can try to take that and grow it more than the previous owner did. So there wasn't any fast signs in DC. So we opted to do a vanilla box. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some days I, 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 I'm happy about that Maverick decision. Some days I'm like, oh, you know, was that, was that the smartest decision? But I think because of where and when and how and, you know, my connection with the city, I think it was the right decision, but it was hard. I mean, it was, it's, you really start with nothing. You open your doors, the phones are on, and they're not ringing because don't nobody know you're there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, but that's the way we started, and, and, it, and it kind of took off, and, and business was good. And, again, it being a franchise with national support, they made me do things that I probably would not have done as fast otherwise in terms of getting the name out there, people recognizing that people, Internet was picking, you know, people, Internet picked up, people could Google search now. So it's kind of like a mentor-mentee kind of thing where they were guiding you through the phase of, uh, in a quicker pace than you would have done. Well, yeah, I mean, they offer that support. They have a system that says do this, 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 mm-hmm. and this. And, you know, you just open a business. You're just trying to figure out how do I turn the lights on, yeah. you know. But, you know, someone's there saying, helping you do it and telling you to do it. And, you know, you got to put this ad out there. You got to put this spot on. You got to, you know, pay for, you know, back then yellow pages, you know, <laughs> or whatever it was to get business mm-hmm. that, you know, it may have took me five years to get around to doing that otherwise because I would have been lost in just a minutiae of the work. But, you know, they had stuff set up. They had people to help you, uh, counselors and stuff. So, yeah, so it was like a mentor, a mentee. But, you know, I'm paying them for it. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, you know, I always tell my employees, I'm like, we pay them. They they work for us. Yeah, yeah. So you need something technical support. You know, I don't have to always call an a, a IT person. I can call the corporate office and say, "Hey, this this isn't working. What do we do?" And most times, that's something they can they can handle. Okay. So, how did you go about um, building your book of business? I'm like, it crafted itself a couple ways. So okay. you know, we talked about yellow pages. Yellow pages was the biggest ripoff ever. Um, I mean, you know, and and we all y'all we all remember the yellow pages. I mean, that it was it was pre Google, pre internet, but it was expensive. And we started quantifying the customers we were getting out of there. We're spending twelve hundred dollars a month to Ooh. be in this book, and that was not. <laughs> By any means, yellow pages make it a killing. It's kind of like a crapshoot, right? Yeah. And the customers were like, "Can I do a decal?" <laughs> you know, a seventy-five dollar customer. <laughs> so it was no return on on profit there. But you yeah. know, it's the only thing to really kind of get your name out of there. And then you started joining organizations, the chamber councils, mm-hmm. kind of going. And that you know, it, it works differently in every city. I mean, I've had people that have had great success with it. I've had some sort of mediocre success with it. It depends on your city. Um, if the right kind of people for your business are in those same organizations. So you it's a trial and error. You go out, you find a customer that needs your services, and you hold on to them. You, you keep right. them engaged. Mm-hmm. You know, you hopefully, you know, the best way we, we, we do before, before Google um, or, or the Internet, the best way was when people would change jobs. I mean, just keeping them engaged because I had a great customer that worked at this company. And then he went to another company. Mm. Take me with you. <laughs> and then let me call back and see who got your job so I can stay here as well. And that's how you kind of, you know, I tell my guys all the time is you want to stay engaged with your clients so you can grow big and wide in that company. Okay. So I want that person to start getting more. And I want him to share me with his friends so they can start getting more. And then when they go to the next company, take me with you so I can meet all those people so they, you know, we can provide our service for them. And if the service is good, they have no problem doing that. Thank you.